So in this lecture, we will be reviewing simple linear regression. Now, this will be a little bit different from what you have seen before, both in terms of the model and in terms of the quantities we care about. Obviously, this is just to prepare us to learn about a Bayesian linear regression, so our perspective is shifted towards that goal. Now, that being said, let's begin by looking at our model. Since this is just simple linear regression, we'll only have a single input variable, which we will call x. We'll have a slope which is called w, and a noise term which we call epsilon. The output will be called y. Our assumption, as per usual with linear regression, is that epsilon is drawn from a standard normal with mean zero, and variance sigma squared. As you can see, there is no bias term in this model. Of course, a bias term would make our model more flexible, since currently our line can only pass through the origin. However, recall that with linear models, we typically don't include the bias term explicitly. Instead, we just capture the bias term in the weight vector, where the corresponding input is always set to 1. As such, learning about multivariate linear regression will be sufficient to understand how to incorporate a bias term. And as you know, that will come later in the course. One useful notation we need to add is the subscript i, which goes with x, y, and epsilon. As you know, in order to train our model, we need multiple data points. As per our usual convention, the number of data points will be denoted as capital N, and each data point will be indexed by i. So i goes from 1, 2, 3, and so forth, all the way up to n. At this point, we can also state that epsilon is iid normal. This means that each epsilon sub i is independent from the others, and they all come from the same distribution. That is, normal with mean zero and variance sigma squared. Now, as you know, once we have our training data, what we would like to do is train our model. In practice, this simply means find w. With simple linear regression in the frequentist paradigm, this means finding the value of w that minimizes our loss function. And we know that for linear regression, our loss function is the squared error, also known as the sum of squared errors, since it's the squared error for each training point from 1 up to n. Now, how do we find w? Well, I just said we want to minimize our loss. As you know, this can be done using calculus, and it leads to a closed form solution. We'll begin by writing down our loss function j to be the squared error loss. That is, the sum of the squares of the differences between y sub i and y hat sub i. In the next step, we can make use of the fact that y hat sub i is just w times x sub i. Note that this is also equal to the sum of the epsilon sub i's each squared. Although, note that we don't need to make use of this fact. The next step is to differentiate j with respect to w. For this course, I'm going to assume that you know how to do this, since it's part of the prerequisites, and on top of that, it's very simple. The 2 comes down, and then we differentiate the inside. That's just the derivative of y sub i minus w times x sub i, and that derivative is minus x sub i. And remember, since we want to find the minimum of j, we want to set the derivative to 0. Note that we can divide both sides by 2, and the 2 disappears, since 0 divided by 2 is still 0. We can also get rid of the negative sign, since 0 times negative 1 is still 0. The next step is to multiply in the x sub i's. This gives us y sub i times x sub i minus w times x sub i squared. Note that this is all still inside the sum. The next step is to split the sum into two sums, which is allowed since when you sum things, it doesn't matter which order you sum them together. Once we've done that, we recognize that w doesn't depend on i, so it can be brought outside the sum. And finally, we remember that we want to set this equal to 0 and solve for w. We get that w is just the sum of the element-wise product of the x's and y's 
divided by the sum of the x sub i's each squared. Note that we won't bother to vectorize this expression, since it won't be useful for our later work.